I'm in a happy mood because they've finally done it. Intel is changing its node names. What's your minimum specification? Linode makes managing cloud infrastructure easy with sane pricing, a full-featured API, and 100% human support. Whether it's a personal VPN, game server, website, or a big-ass GPU solution, new users can try Linode today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techtechpotato. So today, as in right now, when this video is going live, Intel is having its Intel Accelerated event, in which CEO Pat Gelsinger and Dr. Ann Kaliha are presenting the future of Intel's process node and packaging manufacturing. Now, it's been a while since we've seen detailed, updated roadmaps from Intel, and this event is exactly that. It's a chance for the company to put one foot forward and say, these are the process nodes, this is what we're doing, and when. Coupled with that, there's a little bit of a surprise where Intel is changing the name of its nodes. So, Intel process node naming. We already know about 22 nanometer, 14 nanometer, 14 plus, 14 plus plus, 14 plus 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 plus. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. 10, 10 plus, 10 plus plus, which then became 10 plus, then 10 super fin, 10 nanometer enhanced super fin, then 7 nanometer, and then something about gate all around being on five nanometer sometime soon. Whatever way you want to remember Intel's process node naming, it's a mess. It is simply a mess. Not only is it a mess, but every time I explain it, every time anybody in the press explains it, any time Intel explains it, when comparing to their other foundries, Samsung and TSMC, they have to explain that, hey, look, our 10 nanometer, roughly the same density as TSMC's, 7 nanometer. Intel 7 nanometer, roughly the same transistor density as TSMC's, 5 nanometer. Given that these numbers are just names and don't actually mean anything physical, the fact that they become marketing terms with a numerical order has really given Intel, put or put Intel essentially on the back foot. And this is going to come to a head when Intel is going to offer its foundry services over the next few years. Customers are going to have to decide between a TSMC, an Intel, a Samsung, maybe even a global foundries process, and they're going to have these numerical values, and they're going to have to decide which one they want for the price performance. Now, Intel has decided, based on feedback from people like me, from other press, from other analysts, from customers, that is going to change its node name to be in more in line with the rest of the industry. Now, let's put it into perspective here. Normally, when we're talking about node changes, we either talk about a full node or a half node. Now, these are relatively new names in of themselves. But the idea is that if you have a major manufacturing change, that's called a full node jump. Now, if you have a minor change or an update, that's called a half node jump, or maybe multiple small updates equal a half node. Now, Intel's way of describing those very small updates was to put a plus, 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 plus. Samsung and TSMC, on the other hand, kept decreasing the number. So in Samsung's case, you have 10 nanometer, 8 nanometer, 7 LPP, 6 LPP, 5 LPE, even 4 LPE are all roughly based on the same process node arrangement. So while Samsung and TSMC were going down in number, Intel kept its numbers the same. And as a result, we're in this situation where Intel 10 became roughly you know, the same as Intel 7. What Intel is doing today is realigning their node naming. So Intel 10, 10 Superfin, that stays the same. That's already out in the market. Uh, that's already productized. That's going to stay the same. Next is what we used to call 10 nanometer enhanced superfin. This is what Old Lake is going to be on. This is what uh, Sapphire Rapids is going to be on. That is now Intel 7 or Intel 7 nanometer. The documents we've been getting says Intel 7, but it's going to be weird not saying nanometer. So Intel 7 nanometer. That's going to come with the benefits of superfin. Now, after Intel 7 or what used to be called 10 enhanced superfin, is Intel 4. Intel are going to skip the number 5 for some reason. 
But what used to be Intel 7 is now Intel 4. What used to be Intel 7 nanometer in the old scheme is now Intel 4. This is where Intel is going to introduce EUV on a substantial number of layers in the design. And we're going to get enhanced power performance uplifts and all that good stuff that comes with a major node change. After Intel 4 becomes Intel 3, which used to be called 7 plus, and that is going to be a mod. It's kind of that's where Intel kind of changes its design scheme to be a bit more modular. So Intel 3 will be roughly the same as Intel 4, but with just higher performance, high density libraries, and uh, obviously next generation FinFET transistors. Now after three nanometer, usually we we expect two nanometer, but Intel is changing it up. And here's your answer is what we're going to happen when we're going to run out of nanometer numbers. We're going to move to angstroms. Now, nanometer is uh, 10 to the negative 9, angstrom is 10 to the negative 10. So 10 angstroms equals 1 nanometer. However, because these are all names, it doesn't actually measure anything physical. So to go back, Intel 3 then becomes Intel 20A. And this is actually going to be one of Intel's big, important nodes. Intel is saying this is coming out in 2024, and it's going to be the first to use Intel's new ribbon FET transistors. So if you've been following transistor technology, we've been dealing with FET transistors for how many years now? Since you know, Intel's 22 nanometer. And we've had you know, first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen. But at some point, FinFET transistors are running out of steam. You can only go 3D up so much. Beyond that, as we've spoken about in this channel, you have gate all around transistors, where you essentially have sheets, nano sheets, nano ribbons, stacked up on top of each other, and that's where you get your scaling from. Intel is going to introduce its first generation gate all around design, which they're marketing as ribbon FETs, with Intel 20A coming 2024. Also an in Intel 20A is going to become what Intel is calling power vias, which is backside power delivery. Now, if you think about a chip, layers of transistors, and then on top of the transistors, you build all the wires that you connect the transistors together, and that's how you move data around. And inside there, you've also got a bit of power, and you've got to manage the power and how it interacts with the other wires so you don't get interference and lose your signal. With power vias, or backside power delivery, you, instead of having that sort of cake arrangement of layers and layers and layers, you now have a sandwich. You're filling in the middle is transistors. On one side of that, you have the communication wires. And on the other side of that, you have the power connectors. So now, instead of becoming a cake, you have a sandwich. And Intel 20A will be the first process node to offer this technology. Uh, Intel is saying that for Intel 3, Intel 20A and beyond will all be offered to Foundry customers. So this is where kind of Intel shifts away from FinFETs. FinFETs have been in the industry for a long time. They've made Intel a lot of money. So let's see how Intel can uh, execute, essentially, with these ribbon FETs and power vias. Now, Intel also uh, explains that after 20A will be 18A, essentially 18 angstroms. But again, it's not a measurement. It's just a name. This is where Intel will be using a second generation EUV. So EUV, extreme ultraviolet lithography, uh, this is what has been essentially bringing forward the next generation of uh, computer designs, getting those transistors really, really small. Inside the uh, machine, there's a massive uh, lens, the last stage, and that has what's called a numerical aperture. The current value of that numerical aperture is 0.33. The new version will be 0.55, also known as high numerical aperture or high NA. In short, this just allows you to have a better contrast, a better resolution with your manufacturing. And Intel is going to be the key customer for ASML, the company that makes these machines, over TSMC and over Samsung. Intel told us that they will be the first company to receive a high NA machine for volume production. Uh, this is coming in 2025, and it also coincides with Intel claiming that they will become leaders in performance, in uh, manufacturing performance, leadership performance with their transistors in 2025. That all coincides right there with Intel 18A process node and high, high NA design, high NA EUV.
Now, on top of all this, on top of all process node, we also have packaging. Now, I've explained on this channel, EMIB and Foveros, embedded multi-die interconnect bridge, and Foveros uh, die-to-die stacking, essentially 2.5D and 3D. Intel has said that they have a roadmap for both technologies. We'll have uh, second generation EMIB uh, coming uh, after Sapphire Rapids, which would be Granite Rapids, 2023, 2024. But the more important stuff is on the Foveros side. So Foveros die-to-die -die stacking, we saw it in Lakefield. Uh, currently, the little bumps in between the dies, uh, they're spaced apart by 50 micron. Second gen Foveros, as used in Meteor Lake, will be using uh, 36 micron bump to bump. Uh, it's called the pitch. That's the pitch dimension, which offers a 2x increase in density. Beyond that, we have third generation Foveros, which they're calling Foveros Omni. Now, if you follow this technology, this is what we used to call ODI, Omnidirectional Interface, but uh, it's being renamed or marketed as Foveros Omni. This brings the bump pitch down to 25 microns. But when Foveros was all about two dies stacked on top of each other, the whole point was that the top die has to be smaller than the bottom die to fit it on. With ODI, the top die can be bigger, so you essentially end up with an inverted hat where the brim is wider than the head bit. So what this allows uh, design to do is, instead of putting in those you know, original first generation bumps, you had to put data and power, with the power causing you know all the interference for signal integrity you move the power to the outside of the chip so you have massive pillars coming up from the substrate to the top die and then your bottom die can just deal with data and that actually makes it easier to make those foros bump die really really close uh, down to uh, 25 micron now beyond that intel also spoke about fourth generation foros called foros direct if you've seen TSMC uh, chip on wafer stacking uh, or AMD's vCache technology, this is kind of what that is. You're essentially getting two chips and just plunking them together. Similar sort of thing, uh, just copper to copper bonding. You have lots of things to get right when you design stuff like that. But basically the bump pitch goes now down to 10 micron or a 6x increase in density for those uh, data connections. And there we have it. That's Intel accelerated in a nutshell. I know the packaging stuff is, you know, a bit more esoteric than understanding what's going on with the process nodes. I, for one, am really, really glad Intel's changed its process node naming. I know a load of people will be annoyed, confused, saying, is Intel trying to change the game? My argument is no. You know, what they've done for years is plus, 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 while their competitors have been reducing the numbers, regardless of whether it's a full node or a half node transition or something in between. What this does is it realigns Intel to the rest of the industry. The rest of the industry were doing one thing, Intel was doing another, and Intel decided you know, with feedback from some of us saying, we've got a good of design on our 10 nanometer as CSMC 7 in terms of density. So we're just gonna align the numbers, align the names, and so, now we have to talk about Old Lake being on 7 nanometer, Sapphire Rapids being on 7 nanometer, Intel 7, again, not sure if nanometer is exactly part of the name. And then we speak, look at Intel 4 for EUV, Intel 3 for more EUV, then Intel 20A for new gate all around transistors. Fantastic. I love this, and I hope you guys do as well. Now, you may think me saying that makes me an Intel fanboy. No, I just love consistency, and this just makes things more consistent. Now, the big question on all this is, can Intel execute? We know Intel has been having problems with its uh, 10 nanometer portfolio for a number of years now. Intel, the other day in their financial call, CEO Pat Gelsinger said that Intel is now making more wafers on 10 nanometer than they are on 14 nanometer, uh, which is a sizable jump. Uh, in what we expected those ratios to be. Though with uh, next generation Intel being on Intel 7, uh, Old Lake, and then Intel 4 with EUV, really that's the Intel 4 has got to be the sort of inflection point to see whether Intel can actually progress forward in a more modular fashion with its process node designs. And hopefully then it can execute on a much more regular cadence in line with you know, its main competitor, TSMC. What's my minimum specification here? 
Well, we're going to be holding Intel to account. We want Intel to execute. We want Intel to be competitive because that's how this industry goes. So we will be keeping close tabs on them to make sure that they absolutely do what they say they're doing.